Boys and girls, cats and squirrels, welcome to a special episode. Get my phone set one last time here. Um, of our stream, we're going to take a look at the rules for the new game, Marvel Crisis Protocol, from Atomic Mass Miniatures. It's a brand new um, kind of affiliate uh, studio from. Uh, sorry, Asmody Games. Arm is not cooperating well here. I should be able to get most of it in the shot. So what I'm going to do here today is take a look at the rule book that they put out online for free, which is pretty sweet, on their website. It's available at uh, AtomicMassGames.com. <clears throat> um, it's pretty much everything that's on their rule book at the moment. Um, filming this on August 7th. Uh, the rules, or the, this was only announced just, oh, uh, um, just under a week ago. I believe it was either the 1st or 2nd um, of August. This was announced at Gen Con. Super excited. Love Marvel stuff. Love miniature mm -hmm. games, obviously. Um, so really, really pumped for this. Uh, super excited. Can't wait. Um, right now it has a Fall 19 release scheduled. Um, hopefully that is sooner in the fall than later. Uh, a couple people around here really excited to, to talk about the to, to play this and this is definitely 100% going to be covered on the channel I'm going to get this as soon as I possibly can get them painted up as quickly as I can and we'll get some games Again as fast as possible. So we're gonna dive right in um, I'm not gonna go over it rule by rule page by page like I said it's more of a, a little overview um, especially people are, are curious about this uh, to take a look and see what we got going so printed this out, stapled it a bit like a book, and let's take a look. Let's see what we can see here. So I um, want to give credits to the people real quick, just a couple. Um, a head of studio and game design by William Schick. So awesome. Thank you, William. Um, sculpting director Dallas Kemp, uh, which is interesting that we have the sculptor. It was Dave Kidd. Uh, so far, these models look awesome. All the stuff that I've seen, can't wait. Uh, Will Pagani. Uh, is the game senior game developer who I know um, used to or still does both. Uh, I know he used to work for, at one point he worked for Privateer Press, which I find it interesting that they say additional contribution by Privateer Press, even though um, they're part of Asmodee Games. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so if we look through this rule book, um, it's laid out pretty well. So, uh, as a start, um, we've got basics, kind of. Sorry, I'm going to try to zoom out a little bit more. Um, it kind of goes through what, you know, what this is, a uh, little flavor text, game overview, it's a minis game, if you haven't played that before, you know, it's a good place to start, um, I'm going to kind of skip over that stuff for now, um, we got a cool picture of the Captain Marvel mini, looks sweet, I kind of wish she came with multiple heads, I saw some people online complaining that she has this haircut, um, which I don't have a problem with that particular haircut, just be kind of cool if she had like the helmeted head and the mohawk head and stuff like that. But, you know, maybe down the line they'll be adding stuff like that. Um, I'm going to jump right into kind of the meat and potatoes, our character cards. Um, I would be doing, one of my friend, uh, special guest Tim, excuse me, already asked if we could do like a play test kind of thing since the rules are out. And I said, well, we can't yet because there's only one character that we know even part of his stats and... Uh, we don't have things like rain coolers or maps or anything like that. So, as soon as, like I said, as soon as I get the core box, we'll be doing that. Um, so, actually, before I go into that detail, I want to talk a little bit about how this game is set up. So, things like uh, building a roster, obviously, really important part. So, this had me a little confused at first, but I, after reading through the rest of the rules, it made more sense, which is one reason why I'm doing this video to kind of help you save time here. So it's looking like this, looking at this, and it says the roster consists of three different things. First, you have ten characters as your team members. And I was reading this, and I was like, okay. So you take ten models. And I thought, oof, this sounds a lot like the first edition of Age of Sigmar, and just you throw models on the table. And I was like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going and see, see what happens. So you start with ten characters you pick, just ten models. Um, then you have eight team tactics cards, which, um, from what I understand, have a lot. They only show one in the rules, but all kinds of different abilities that you can kind of buff up your guys Probably debuff as well. Uh, you know, we only have the one from uh, the Red Skull here that we have an example of where um, he can make um, 
allies of his kind of act again after they go, but they can take damage for it. So things like that that really throw throw the game for a loop. Um, and then you have two sets of different we call crisis cards, which is what the whole game is based on, right? Crisis protocol. So you have three secure crisis cards and three extraction crisis cards. Um, which if we go back to near the beginning, it talks a bit about what these crisis cards are. Um, so as an example, they give us one example of a secure card, which is basically goes over what you're trying to accomplish during the game. Um, so here it says, Riot Spark over Extremis 3.0. Um, so that kind of gives you a little bit of narrative of what's going on here. So there's, um, there are uh, Extremis consoles placed around the map, and then you score points for securing those during the game, during the cleanup phase. Um, and you can interact with the Extremis consoles to heal your guys, which is really cool. Um, the only thing here so far that we've that we're kind of missing from this is that for the setup it says place four extremist consoles which are targets of opportunity as shown on map D but nowhere in this book is there anything that refers to maps and what that might be um, so I'm not sure where we're gonna get that information if it's not in the rule book uh, maybe like the maps are labeled um, cause I know the core set comes with like fold out maps. Maybe those are labeled like A, B, C, D and on each map they have marks where objectives go, um, are these targets of opportunity. So, you know, we'll see. Um, and then we have this number here, 17 is the threat level, which goes back to, if we go back to our roster building, each model has a threat level. So when you're actually building, you know, figuring out the game, you set up your table, you put your terrain down. Um, and then you use your roster to kind of fill, figure out a couple other things. Um, so you're going to, first you need to set up your mission. Before you, st you still don't know what models you're using, actually. The ten models that you chose is kind of like a, uh, a full sideboard. Um, so when you build your mission, you choose, um, you're going to take a look at your crisis cards. You're going to have your three secure and your three extraction from your roster. And then whoever has priority, which you roll off for using their um, unique dice, uh, determine who's going to pick which to build the mission. Um, Alright, so you pick, so first off, it says the player with priority, so whoever won that roll off to win priority, uh, gets to choose one of their decks. They get to choose either secure or extraction, so they can basically choose um, what the mission, what you're trying to accomplish is, or they can choose the other one, which is going to be more like... Um, I, it has, doesn't show any of those in here, but I'm assuming it's more like what other things are going on. Maybe there's some kind of something else is happening. Uh, maybe there's bystanders in the way, or maybe it's during rush hour. I have, I have no idea. I'm just making stuff up off the top of my head. Um, you choose which one of those you want to determine, and you shuffle your little deck of three uh, randomly. You pick two of those at random, and then you get to choose one. So you get a little bit of choice with what you have put in your roster. The other person does it with the other set of cards, you reveal them at the same time, and there's your mission. Which I like, you don't have to look up the missions on different books or anything like that, you have them right on the cards, which I'm assuming uh, as expansions come out they'll add different cards to that. So like, I know the core set comes with 10 models, and then right away they're releasing a Hulk expansion and a MODOK expansion, which I'm only assuming comes with more than just the model and its card. I'm gonna guess it also comes with more of those different um, crisis cards, which sounds cool. I like that idea where bam bam, there's your rules for the mission, you don't have to refer back to a book later. Then, I said looking at the, sorry, I'm going to flip back here, the threat level on that card, which is 17, that determines the size of your um, squad. So next you're going to build a squad. So I'm going to show this, this picture while I discuss that a bit. So the squad is what you can build based on the threat levels of your different characters and that mission. So that was 17, the reason is our, is our example. I know Captain America, looking at his player card, he has a threat level of 4. Alright, so this looks like it could potentially be a level of 17, um, two, two level 17 squads up against each other. Crossbones is probably relatively cheap. Captain America seems cheap. I don't again, it's the only one to compare it to, so I can't say how much he is compared to others, but I'm going to assume that Captain Marvel is more expensive than Captain America. I'm just she just seems like she'd have more powers like that. So this so out of those 10, you get to choose each game you play from those to make that threat level squad. 
which I like the idea of that. I feel like that really goes a long way right out of the box to, to really um, help with organized play. Um, so like if you show up for a tournament of some kind, you just show up with 10 models and you can change your roster each game. Um, sorry, you can change your squad each game from your roster. You have some things to choose from mm -hmm. um, depending on the mission. So if it's a mission with more objectives, maybe you take more cheaper models that can go grab those objectives. Or if there's fewer objectives, you take more of the more powerful guys so you have more hard hitters. I don't know, all kinds of things that could happen. Um, what was the last part? Crisis card. Oh, your team, your team, uh, uh, team tactic cards. You get, you have eight in your roster, but when you um, like have your deck for the game, you only get five, um, and you get to use those throughout the game. All right, so you got your table set up. Uh, luckily, the the new set come, the core set comes with terrain, and they're releasing a separate terrain pack. I'm really excited to have little cars and things like that. Um, Daily bugle building is really cool. I'm assuming that's all unpainted, like the models. Um, but we don't have too much information on that yet. Uh, deployment's super easy. It just says the player with priority picks one of the edges of the board, and you deploy your models within th range three, which um, is with their unique range dice, or range rulers. Here's one here. We don't know exactly how big that is. I'm going to guess that's like four or five inches. Um, within that range of the table edge, one at a time, uh, like you place one, they place one, you place one, they place one, until everybody's done. And then you go to the right, to the first turn. So our rounds... Um, similar to something like, um, seems to be, not like Warhammer, which is usually what I play, um, where you activate your whole team at once, it's going to be similar to things like X-Wing or Shadespire, where you're going back and forth with activations of characters, which sounds good. Or the new Warcry does the same thing, which I like that a lot. I, I don't, I really hope, um, GW realizes that's kind of the way these games play better, and they do that with 40k and AOS where you're activating units at a time, at least in like the shooting phase. They already do it during combat, so let's see if they can kind of pick up on that. So um, our round, we don't have separate player turns because you're going back and forth the whole time. Um, you start with a power phase where everybody gets one power token added to them. You need these to do different powers, which makes sense. A little bit of resource management I like. Alright, so every, every character gains one power. Um, then you can also do things like resolve any player effects that happen during the power phase um, Like if you have a, a team card that happens during the power phase or resolve any crisis effect or effects on crisis cards That happen during the power phase super simple And then you have your activation phase which is like the meat and potatoes of the turn Where you go back and forth active starting with the player with uh, that has the priority Token that you rolled off for in the beginning they get to activate a character first Activation seems pretty simple. You get to make two actions. You get a move, an attack, superpower, or shake. Which, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Move, they can move uh, using its speed, which again, they have their um, special range rulers. Uh, I've got a picture of one over here, um, which are these that can turn up to 90 degrees, and that is a, they got small, medium, or large. Um, pretty basic. Maybe other ones will add more, like if they have, um, if they do add X-Men, or Quicksilver as an Avenger, and then he could potentially have a higher, maybe he comes with his own, I don't know, like I said, there's all kinds of, you know, it's limitless at this point. Uh, you can move, you can climb, potentially, if you have that ability, which just makes it so you kind of ignore terrain, um, and then you can attack, which is obviously the big one, um, depending, we'll go, we'll talk about the character cards in a moment, depending on what attacks they have on their card, determines what they can do, and then superpowers, um, often go with the tax, but some of them, uh, of course, are going to be different. Um, they are ones that use the power that you generate um, during the power phase and when you get hit, which is interesting. And then shake. Um, you can use one of your two actions to shake a special condition. So you can have like bleed or poisoned or confused. What are some of the ones listed here? Slow, sorry, not confused. Um, incinerate, hex, stagger, stun, all those kind of things. You can just Use one of your actions to shake it off. You're a superhero. You can just take it. Um, and then we ha after you're done with all of your activations, you can pass. When it's your turn, like say you have one guy left, but you want somebody to move, potentially move closer or something, you can pass that, and then they can go, and then you'll get a turn with that one. Uh, once everybody's done, then you go to the cleanup phase, uh, which is kind of like end of turn phase, kind of you know pretty standard thing. Where tokens go away. You got to see if any of your characters are dazed. So if they've taken enough damage. 
uh, equal to their stamina, they become dazed and they can be, they're going to turn them to the injured side of their card. Um, which the, my only thing is, again, the rulebook doesn't show us an injured card. It only shows up the healthy side of Captain America. So I don't know what an injured side looks like. I'm assuming they can still do something. I'm sure all of their stats are reduced and maybe their attacks are worse. Unless you're the Hulk and then it's probably better. Um, things like that. But I'd, li I'd like to see one, but we haven't seen that yet. Um, uh, let me see. It's just kind of the typical. They have like a breakdown of it. Well, anything else that says it happens during the cleanup phase happens at this point. Um, if a character is dazed, you take off all their damage tokens and flip them, flip the card over, and they kind of start over, but they're worse. Like I said, probably worse. And then it's, I like this. It says, if the player who activated the last character during the activation phase has any has the priority token, they pass it to their opponent. Which is kind of interesting that it's not just whoever has it gives it off. It's it, You give it over to the other person if you activated the last character. So that's where I think passing your turn can be kind of strategic, where it's like, okay, I'm going to let them have a turn before me, but I'm going to keep priority for the next round, kind of thing, potentially. Uh, let's see, you remove all, all, as you guys activate, you give them a token to say they've activated, to help you remember. Uh, you remove all those, of course, and then you have the mission tracker, which just kind of keep, helps you keep track of how many victory points everybody has and what turn it is. So obviously you just move it to the next turn and everything like that. Um should say, I forgot to say at the beginning, this, um, it says right parts of a round. The first thing it says is a game of Crisis Protocol is played over six rounds. So you've got six turns to do stuff, which is cool. Makes sense. I like you know, limits. It doesn't just go forever. Uh, a couple other quick things. Um, moving is simple. you got your little movement tool. This shows um, Black Widow using the climb ability, so she counts as size five. Um, of five so she can jump basically she can climb up the building it's just no matter if you climb no matter what your speed is it gets reduced to small to represent you taking time to climb up the building which again makes sense um a couple cool little things you can have throwing like war machine hordes um that would be part of your attack it's not like it's own separate thing but like your attack says if you do this sometimes you can throw the character um you can push them which is the Pretty much the same as throw, except when you throw something, they can crash into something, they can collide and do damage to themselves or other things, and you can break terrain, which is cool. Um, being placed is another one. Things like teleportation and stuff like that can place models, which um, again just kind of moves their position, but they don't count as they don't count as being moved like that, so they can't crash into stuff. Um, kind of interesting diagram showing the the idea of pulling, pushing away from you or pulling towards you, like Spider-Man. Can pull enemies towards him with his web, which awesome makes sense. Um, then there's a big old section about making an attack, which seems complicated at first, but I'm sure it's one of those that once you do it a couple times, it's pretty easy. Uh, cool picture of Ultron. I'll go over making an attack in just a second when we look at the character card. Uh, a couple of special type of attacks. We got beam attacks, which just hits everything in a line, and then area attacks, which just kind of radiates out from the character. It sounds like. Uh, example of a beam attack. It was a little confusing the wording at first, but you just place the template, um, the range, whatever it is, and here it says the Hulk is doing a thunderclap where he smacks his hands together, and you put the, the template down, and any, and any model it touches gets hit by it, friend or foe. Um, luckily, friend, if you hit a friendly model with it, they just take the damage. They don't take any extra effects. Like, I bet this thunderclap does damage and stuns. I would bet money on. So him against Dr. Octopus and Baron Zemo, assuming those are enemy characters, would take the damage and any potential uh, extra effects. Uh, it talks about taking damage, which I'll talk about when I go over the attack. Line of sight is pretty straightforward. Um, uh, everything has different size categories. We got right here size 1 to 5, where things like size 1 is small benches, or benches small crates, lamppost. Size 2 are dumpsters, cryotubes, cars. Uh, I think most characters fall in size 2. Size 3, kiosks, billboards, food carts. Excuse me, four, size 4, trucks, market stands. Size 5, buildings, monoliths, pyramids. So that's really big. Um, I like the idea of if there's anything that's the same size or bigger between you and opponent, and you can't draw a line without going through that, which is shown... I think it's on the next page, actually. Oh, where did that go? There was a picture showing that, but it was kind of far away from line of sight. Um, so we have this image here showing 
could get a better in frame. Uh, Iron Man trying to shoot Dr. Octopus, but because this building is he's Iron Man size two, so is Dr. Octopus. This building is size three, and because he can't draw a line directly from his base to Dr. Octopus without going through this piece of terrain that's bigger than them, he can't see Dr. Octopus, which makes sense. I think it's pretty pretty close to true line of sight, but not exactly. Um, I like the size thing. Everything will be labeled. They said with all the stuff. Um, you can throw stuff. You can um, you can have special abilities that allow you to throw terrain pieces, which sounds really cool. Like throwing a dumpster at somebody sounds awesome. Um, there are a little bit of rules for dodging when things are thrown at you, and there are a little bit of rules for cover. Not not too much. Um, it says they must be within range one of a terrain feature of the same size or larger. And then if the straight line can be drawn any through the attacker's base to the port to the defender's face base through that terrain, um, and they're more than range two away from the defender, then they can change the result of one die to a block, which is a success for defending. So let's talk about attacking a little bit. Um, so when you attack, you're going to look at your character's card to see what kind of abilities they have. What are their attacks? Right? Makes sense. So with our only example here, we have Captain America. The good old boy. All right, so he's got a couple different attacks. He has Strike, Shield Throw, and Shield Slam. Apologies if you can't see this quite. My printout is not perfect. Um, I'll try to zoom in a little bit here, but I doubt that'll improve it that much. Maybe we can read it. Oh, now we're, in the sh now we're casting a shadow. Too much of a shadow. Let's try to fix this a little bit here. Come on, light, work with me. Better. Better. All right, so... Real quick, uh, so he's got his three attacks. So strike, um, the first here that looks kind of like crosshairs is the range, so he can attack up to range two. The little uh, dumbbell is uh, your attack. So like your attack power, how many, um, what do they call that? Strength, the strength of the attack. That's how many uh, dice you get to roll when you make this attack. The last symbol here that's like a starburst is the power. That's the symbol for power that you gain every turn. Um, that's how much it would cost. In this case, it's zero because he's just like punching. And then there's a couple extra effects with it. So I'll go over how this works first, then we'll look at the effects. So range two means they have to be within um, that range ruler, range two. I don't know how big it is. It could be, looks like three inches, four inches, something like that. Um, as long as your opponent is within that range, you roll five dice. Uh, the dice, they break down for you in the rule book. There's one critical, there's one wild, oh, the eight sided die, sorry, D8. Uh, two hits, one block, two blanks, and a failure with a little skull. If you roll a failure, you can't do anything with that. Um, there are a lot of different things that allow you to do re-rolls and change dice. If you roll a failure, failure, it's stuck. Um, so with this, he would roll five attack dice and hope for a bunch of hits and criticals. Uh, with your initial roll, your first roll, in this case, again, five dice, any criticals allow you to then add another, you get to roll one more die added to that pool, uh, which is cool. If that if anything, after that first roll is a critical, it counts as a hit, but you don't get any additional dice from that. It's only that first roll. So even things that allow you, so if you had something that allows you to re-roll any, like blanks or uh, blocks or something like that, and you, you re-roll it and it becomes a critical, it doesn't give you additional die because it wasn't part of that initial roll. All right, so let's say um, Captain America is fighting somebody with very similar stats to him. Um, this second roll of symbols and numbers here are your defensive stats. So this is your defense against um, physical, the red fist, the yellow swirly is your defense against energy attacks, like I'm assuming Iron Man's repulsor blast and stuff. And then the third one, this is a blue like eyeball, is your defense against mystical attacks, which would probably be like, um, uh, I'm gonna guess Red Skull with the cosmic cube probably has mystical attacks. Uh, maybe Doctor Strange will come along later and definitely have mystical attacks, things like that. So that's this is how many dice you get to roll against this particular type of attack. So let's say Captain America is fighting somebody that has the same um, uh, physical defense of him of four. They would roll four defense, the four dice. There's not, I almost said defense dice, they're the same dice. Um, so let's say Captain America got a uh, crit and two hits, and then the other dice don't really matter. Um, actually, no, let's say he got one wild. You say you got a crit, a hit, a wild, and two blanks. All right, and then our opponent that we're trying to punch, let's say it's Red Skull for fun, and assume he has four, he might actually have more, but let's assume he has four physical defense dice. 
he um, rolls four dice, and again, any crits he rolls allows him to roll another die in there. But instead of hits, he's looking for the dot, the block, which um, I'll bring that page over real quick. Um, so critical is a little starburst with an exclamation. I think that's almost exactly the same as the critical in Shade Spire, which is funny. Wild's a little swirl. Uh, a hit is just starburst with another little starburst inside of it. Block looks like a shield, a little starburst on it. Blank, there's it's blank, there's nothing. And failure is the little skull. Um, so let's say Red Skull rolls um, a, a block and two hits and a blank because there's two blanks. All right, so then he, I already forgot what my hypothetical was. Um, so let's say, uh, so Captain America has a total of three hits, right? He had that critical, a hit, and a wild, and then two blanks. That's what I said he had. And then let's say... Um, Red Skull rolls a hit, a block, and a blank. So right away, Captain America gets to roll one more die because he rolled a critical. Let's say he rolls that and it's a blank. Try to keep it easier. So he's got three hits total. The wild counts as a hit in this case. Right? Wild. Wilds can trigger special abilities or they are referenced in special rules that usually count as a success. Right. So he's got three total. A critical, a wild, and a hit. Whereas um, Red Skull had a block... What did I say? He had a block, a hit, and a blank, but the hit doesn't count as a, sex, as, as, a, whew, as a success here because he is blocking. All right, so he's got one block. So right away, that one block cancels out one of Captain America's hits. So now, and that goes away. So then Captain America does, for each success that goes through, you do one damage to your opponent. So Cap, or, uh, Red Skull would take two damage, and he would gain two power as well. Um, so you can kind of, you take hits, you build up power, which again, risk and reward kind of, kind of like, um, I was saying resource management with those power, there's a little bit of risk and reward. You hit the guy, but you give them potential to, to power up their superpowers, which is cool. Um, so he takes two damage you put on Red Skull's de uh, card, and then we got to look at, see what other kind of things he has. It says, after this attack is resolved, this character gains power equal to the damage dealt. Cool. Um... So we said he did two damage, so he gains two power as well as doing two damage. So he uh, kind of psychs himself up as he goes and he gets better. And then it says, a wild. if you roll a wild, you get push. If the target character is sized two or less before damage is dealt, it may be pushed away from this character. Uh, and then there's a little circle with an S in it, so it's range. So he gets pushed away up to the small range ruler. Um, cool. So then he, he hits somebody. And they can get pushed back, and he gets power from that. Um, so recap, your strength, the dumbbell there, is how many dice you roll. You're looking for crits, hits, and wilds. Anything else isn't so great. Crits on the initial roll give you additional dice. Wilds um, are great because they count as hits and can uh, activate extras. Like, he wouldn't be able to do this push if you didn't roll a wild. Your opponent looks at their defense to the type of attack that's shown here. This is a red fist. Red Fist is physical. They roll that many dice looking for um, criticals, wilds, or blocks. And uh, each success that the defender gets, it cancels out one success of the attacker. Any attacks, any successes more by the attacker deal damage to the defender. And um, for each damage they take, they also gain a power. Um, so that's the attack. I like it pretty, like I said, it might take a little bit to get used to, but I think it'll be pretty quick once you get going, uh, once you play a game or two, or even just a couple rounds of attacks. Um, so next up, we're going to talk about what we have up top here. Um, so this first one that looks like a heart monitor is what's called their stamina. This is basically their health points. Captain America's got five. I'm going to assume a typical, like, I'm going to assume that's a little more, uh, probably average. Like somebody like Black Widow might have four, and I could see... Iron Man having six, and like Ultron having like eight or something like that. I don't know. I'm just making these up. Uh, next up, these arrows is their movement. Um, it's going to be S, M, or L. So he's got M for medium. Um, this is, it looks like kind of like a letter I, but it's two lines with a uh, double-sided arrow between them. That's their size. He's size two. And this one that um, I don't know, it looks like a web to me. Um, I'm not sure what that's supposed to re represent, that symbol, but the number there is their threat level, so he's threat level four. So he's essentially four points of your squad. 
All right, so those are his attacks. Below, we have his leadership ability. Not everybody has this. Um, this star, which they based it off his shield, of course, because Captain America is like the, the ultimate leader. Um, he has a special ability that he can do at times. It says, each turn, you may reduce the power cost of the first superpower used by each allied character by a one to a minimum of one, but only if they're Avengers, his affiliation Avengers, only if they also have the affiliation Avengers, which I'm not sure where that is described on the card. Like, we all know Captain America is an Avenger, but I don't see anywhere on the card that says what his affiliation is, other than right there. Um, so maybe everybody's a leadership attack ability? Not only some characters have them. So yeah, I'm not sure where else it shows on here that he is an Avenger. Um, I mean, this isn't 100% done, I don't think. So they might maybe they'll add something. I could see in the one of the corners, just add like the Avengers A, something like that, so we know who's part of what team eventually could have. Hopefully an X for X-Men, please. The Atomic Mass games have X-Men. Um, things like that, or like um, the, the first, some of the bad guys are like the, oh shoot, I forgot what they're called. What's Baron Zemo's group? Something of evil. I forget off the top of my head. And then these are other superpowers they might have down here. Five and uh, five here. Or what's numbered five? These are, um, you have three different types of superpowers. You have active, um, which we can see is this little like cross symbol. Reactive is little lightning bolts. And then innate is the infinity sign because it happens all the time. So Captain America has two reactive superpowers that again cost power two and two. So it takes him a little bit to build up those abilities. I'm not going to read over those right now. Just because it's just the idea that he's got these reactive superpowers. I, I'll, okay, I'll do one so we have an idea of how they work. Uh, so Vibranium Shield says, When this character is targeted by a... Oh, geez, it's kind of hard for me to read here. I think that's physical or uh, energy attack. It may use this superpower. You spend two power that, if he had them. And add two dice to this character's defense roll against that attack. Which makes sense. His shield is better against physical and energy attacks, but not helpful against mystic. I like that. Makes sense. Dig it. Um, so that's our character card in a nutshell. If he were to take five damage to fill his as much as he has um, stamina during one ac activation phase, any more damage he takes is just lost. He's already hurt. At the cleanup phase, he would take all those damage off and flip it over to the injured side, which we don't get to see here, unfortunately. I'd like really like to see what an injured card looks like. All right, so um, that's attacking. That's the power of the the card. Um, I'm trying to think of anything major here we're we're missing. Um, so while I flip through this to to remind myself of anything, I'm just gonna say again, I'm super excited for this game. Um, thank you, brand new Atomic Mass Games. Super looking forward to this. Um, nice job with the rule book so far. Only a couple little things. The map thing, I don't understand what's going on there. And, uh, like, we have this about, no, where was that one? weird one? Uh, this picture about line of sight blocking, but then the description for line of sight isn't for, like, two pages. Well, it's on the next page. Okay, but still, when I was reading through it, I was like, wait, what does this have to do with other stuff? So, um, maybe move things around a little bit would be helpful. They got a big old long explanation of how to resolve an attack which um, was super helpful in my initial read-through. I feel like I've got it now, uh, but I like how they, they they did basically what I just did, where they said, okay, they got this many hits, this person rolled their defense and got this many, and this happened. Uh, like this Appendix A timing um, to kind of work out um, if there's any um, kerfuffle about what goes when. Um, and then special conditions, bleed, hex, incinerate, poison, root, shock, slow, stagger, stun, that you can happen... Um, and it says they will be adding more. This is not exhaustive. This is just uh, the, the few beginning ones. Plus, they could always kind of explain it more on the card. Uh, and then the quick reference sheet at the back, I really like this. So breaks down what exactly happens in the power phase. Summary of the activation phase. Uh, not totally in frame there, sorry. Uh, power phase, activation phase, cleanup. The different actions you can do. Uh, the attack sequence, which seems really long, but it's, you know choose an attack, declare a target, pay power cost, um, not as bad as it looks there, what the different symbols and the dice mean in case you forget, which after just a few rolls you'd remember, they're all pretty self-explanatory, and other icons and what they mean, because there are a lot of icons in this game, but I think they did a really nice job of making it pretty obvious. 
I don't like this little one at the bottom. Common rules mistakes, like, already. <laughs> um, they have a, a good group of, they had a big group of playtesters, so I can see this will come up a lot. So I made sure to say this a couple times. Players only roll additional dice for criticals once per roll, not each time a critical is rolled. Um, so once per roll is that initial roll. And then interacting with an objective is not an action. So when you have objectives as part of your mission, um, like that for the example we looked at here about the extremist containers, um, oops, moved my phone and now I'm way out of shot, um, where it says um, you can interact with an extremist console in this mission to remove one damage from non-dazed characters within two within range two of it. That doesn't count as one of your actions. You just get to do that as part of your turn. Uh, so yeah, that's my quick, uh, quick and dirty overview of Marvel Crisis, Crisis Protocol. Um, really looking forward to this. Cannot wait for whenever this comes out. Looking for more announcements. Looking for X Men, Atomic Mass Games. If you happen to watch this, please, please, please include X Men, uh, especially Ice Man. He's my favorite superhero of all time. Um, but yeah, you know, anything other than that? If you've got any questions, um, you know, comment here. Um, Hit us up on Facebook, you know, uh, facebook.com uh, slash for whom the die rolls. <laughs> I don't know what I was brain fart there for a second. Super pumped for this. Let us know if you like this kind of stuff, you want more kind of overviews or, or look at different books and things. Um, thank you, Tom McMahon Schemes. Go check that out. They got their little symbol here, little robot, robot bot. Where to go? There it is. AtomicMassGames.com, go check it out. You can download the rules for free um, if you want, you know, to, to, to dig into it more or just wait till the, the, the course that comes out. Uh, at this point, uh, today, as I'm filming, this is August 7th, a few days ago, um, Miniature Market has stuff up on the site already for pre-order, um, and I'm probably going to buy all of it. <laughs> the core set and both expansions and the terrain set, I'm really hoping that my game budget can fit all that by the time it comes out. So part of me wants this as soon as possible. Part of me wants it to wait a month or so so I can save up my monthly budget here and there um, to make sure I can get it all right out of the bot, right out of the gate and and get going and get, get games played and get some reports shown, maybe do some painting tutorials of things. Um, I'm really excited to try out contrast paints with this. I think it'll work perfect perfect for these models spray iron man uh metal some yellow and red contrast bob's your uncle he'll look great um lots of red and blue It'd be really easy the black contrast will be perfect for black widow yeah super excited for this cannot wait um other than that as always like subscribe check us out here uh, on youtube check us out on facebook uh instagram we try to do um five days a week at least posting um we've got warhammer wednesday stream on twitch wednesdays at nine um nine eastern standard time um definitely but yeah youtube check us out there that's that's uh, what we're looking for um other than that let us know you know be in touch right game on <laughs>